So as I mentioned, I'm Cribbin. And around eight years ago, I was seemingly quite happy. I had a stable job, wonderful wife, three beautiful children. But something inside of me was, you know, I was, I was extremely overweight. You, you wouldn't actually recognize me eight years ago. And I was struggling very heavily with depression and anxiety. And my life very quickly spiraled out of control. I lost my job. I was actually bullied in the workplace. And my marriage collapsed and I found myself alone in an apartment ready to end my life. And being a food scientist, I thought, well, there has to be a way to, to address this. So firstly, I went to the medical profession. I went to a psychologist and the psychologist was like, you need to go on to Prozac and Zoloff. And I didn't really want to go down that path. So that's when I discovered the gut and brain connection. And I started to research more and read more and found fermented foods and probiotics and how important it was to, to how you look and how you feel as well. And so then I started this journey and cut a long story short, I'm back at home with my wife, I'm back with my children and I've never been happier in my whole life. And I wanted to share this message with others because it's so common these days, you know, with anxiety and depression and people overweight and not living the life that you deserve, the, the best possible life, to be the best version of yourself. And that's my mantra, is to teach people how to be the best version of themselves through digestive health. Because I think digestive health is everything. As Hippocrates says, all disease starts in the gut. So by addressing issues of the gut, we can address a lot of health issues. I just want to put a disclaimer out there before I move any further. I'm a scientist. I'm a food scientist. I'm not a medical profession professional. So if you're struggling with any health things, really see a specialist in the medical field. I'm here today to provide some information and knowledge, but the health system is very good and there's some good practitioners out there from a health perspective. But please do take this knowledge as you know, a citizen scientist, you getting to know about fermentation, probiotics, from a food science perspective, this is what I know very well. Being in the food industry for 20 years and being across the food industry in processing plants across the world, this is something I really know well. And this is, this is my foundation of what I teach. So there's a couple of things that really changed my life. When I went on this investigation, the first thing was the gaps, and, um, the gaps, which is gut and psychological syndrome. And this lady, she's a scientist, and she had a daughter, or it's a son or daughter, I can't really remember, but with autism. And she managed to address a lot of these autism issues through treating the gut. And so she created a protocol. It's a very strict diet. Is anybody familiar with gaps at all? It's great. It's, yeah, of course, Robin is. <laughs> But, but GAPS is, is a very strict protocol, but it really helped me. I followed the GAPS diet for, for around six months, and it really helped to re, sort of kind of heal and seal that, that gut lining so I could build a good foundation. So GAPS was one. The next one was Nourishing Traditions, and this follows the work. It's by <coughs> Sally Fallon, and it fo follows the work of Dr. Weston Price. Is anybody familiar with Dr. Weston Price? Weston Price, he was a dentist that focused a lot on these indigenous people around the world who went struggling with mainly bone issues and teeth issues and that's his investigation but he's got some solid information about you know, the tribal diets and things like that which I'll tie back to gut health and probiotics pretty soon. Is that clear? Is there any questions at this point? Also my style is very free-flowing so if you need to clarification you need to stop me and ask a question anytime. And if, if I do run short on time, I'll let you know. But yeah, feel free to stop me at any point and ask for clarification, and I'll, I'll provide that for you. So a good place to start is around the microbiome and probiotics. So is anybody familiar with the microbiome? 
This is this is I'm so excited now because it's most the last the last time I, I did this there was four GPs in the room. Is there, is there any GPs in the room? It's just and I just I collapsed because four G oh my god, that's why I put this medical disclaimer at the start because I don't want to get myself in trouble with doctors, right? But they were so receptive and so amazing. So the microbiome is a, is numerous species of bacteria and yeast that live symbiotically with us. Now when I understood this concept, it really blew my mind because through our evolution, these critters have been part of us all along the way. And the issue is with, I guess, the industrialization of food, with, with, with the advent of antibiotics, not to say antibiotics are a bad thing, but what it's done is we've pretty much turned something that is part of us, it's a symbiotic part of us, it's approximately two to three kilos of mass in the gut. It's huge, it's, a, it's an organ in the gut. And we've turned our attention to thinking that these guys are the bad guys and we indiscriminately kill them off. <laughs> so I wanted to clarify. So it's, it's an organ in the gut that's, that's very important, which we are destroying through our, our modern lifestyle. And so what I want to do is get us back to this. What's, what's even more staggering is that from a DNA perspective, so people are familiar with DNA and what DNA is, most of the DNA in our body is not our own. 99.9% .9 of you from a DNA perspective is these guys. You're only 1.1% 1, 1, 1 you. There's 100 trillion of these guys in you. And most of them live in the, the colon or the large intestine. But each area has its own biome, you know, skin, gut, private parts, all that. So what is it responsible for? It's responsible for 80% of your immune system. It's, imp it's very important for unlocking nutrients to digest your food, to break down very complex carbohydrates and proteins and fats into simple and easy to use forms in the body. They produce vitamins, they produce enzymes, and, but most importantly for me, the interaction between the gut and the gut microbes produce about 95% of serotonin. Does anybody know what serotonin is? So it's the feel-good hormone. And so this is how I, I managed to <coughs> tackle my anxiety and depression with a focus on producing my own serotonin. So rather than using a medication like Zoloft to keep serotonin in the blood longer, I used my gut as a factory, for want of a better word, to produce my own serotonin and other neurotransmitters like GABA, acetylcholine, all these things, dopamine, all these things that impact how you feel. Does that make sense, guys? So what's the benefits of having a balanced microbiome? Well, you're resistant to infection. Your body is nourished. We live in the Western world with an abundance of food, but yet we are malnourished. We're not getting enough nutrients from our food. And what does the body do? It's like, I'm not getting enough of that nutrient. Eat more, <coughs> eat more, eat more. And we overeat. And there's this rampant obesity and diabetes and cancers is because of this reason, weight loss. You will lose weight when you focus on your gut. Your energy levels and your vibrancy will, will be, you know, like it, it will go through the roof because digestion is a huge energy resource and drain for the body. So when you optimize digestion, about 60% of your basal metabolism or your energy production is through digestion. So when you make the digestive process more optimal, your energy is then recovered. You're not wasting that energy. It's like, you know, when you eat like massive Christmas lunch, Christmas is pretty soon, and you're lying on the couch and you're having a food coma, and your body's struggling to digest the turkey and the stuffing and all that. That's the body trying to break down food, and that's the analogy. A feeling of well-being and having amazing skin, because the gut is mirrored in the skin. So you get the gut right, the skin comes right as well. Does that make sense? When you have a, an unbalanced microbiome, 
you're constantly struggling with getting sick, constantly struggling with colds and illnesses, cancer, God forbid, one in two people get cancer. Malnourishment, obesity, weight gain, lack of energy, depression, poor skin, inflammation, allergies, leaky gut, all that kind of stuff. This was me then. This I hope to be more of this. Now how do we acquire a microbiome? This is a, it's a, it's a con controversial topic. And I'll explain why in a sec. It pretty much comes from our, our mothers. So through the birthing process, the inoculation happens from the mother. The contentious part is that if the mother's microbiome is in dysbiosis, meaning the wrong types of organisms, the child will also inherit the dysfunction. So it's hereditary, it's passed on. The other controversial part is that there is a significant difference in the gut bacteria of C-section babies and natural birth babies. So just something to be aware of. And it's all choice and all that, it's controversial. I just wanna give you the information. There is a significant difference. From breastfeeding, this, this is st staggering because the mother will produce a, it's a type of sugar, human milk oligosaccharide. It's not for the mother. It's not for the baby. It's for the baby's microbiome. The mother can't digest it. The baby can't digest it, but the baby's gut bacteria can digest this. Does that make sense? Has anybody come across this information before? It's staggering when you think about it. So as a child gets up to around the age of three, the child will start interacting with the environment, the soil, the play, and acquire more bacteria from pets. And this starts to establish the baby's own unique biome, which you'll carry for the rest of your life. And then things like environmental factors, like the diet that you have, the antibiotic pill that you take, just to give you a, a number on antibiotic, a five-day course of antibiotics not to say I heavily believe in antibiotics for modern society, crucial part, but something you need to be aware of is antibiotics will knock out a third of your biome, one course. And some of those you'll never recover again. So just be wary. If you're really sick, use it. Use it because I don't want people to get sick, but just be mindful in how you use it. It's a beautiful tool but just be mindful, there is a price that comes with this as well. And food, perhaps the most important thing that you can control yourself is your food, what you put in your mouth. And foods can be, you know, it could be detrimental. Has anybody heard of xenobiotics? So xenobiotics are things that impact the biome. That could be things like plastics. You know, people might've heard of BPA, Antibiotics, the biggest source of antibiotics is actually not from the doctor. Does anybody want to guess the biggest source of antibiotics? Meat. Meat, meat. because meat is a very high value product that they have vets on site to make sure they're getting the maximum bang for their buck. So a lot of antibiotics ends up in the food chain through meat. Another one that most <coughs> people are not aware of is salmon, farmed salmon or farmed fish. I have friends in industry and I understand the salmon processing through their eyes and I was told that the salmon cannot survive without antibiotics. They need antibiotics to actually survive. So be mindful of farmed fish, especially farmed salmon. A huge source of antibiotics. Food additives. And since the 1950s, we've pretty much taken you know, this right of cooking and family and making our own meals, and we've put it into tr the trust of, of industry. And I can tell you, I was part of the problem. I was a food technologist, I was a product developer, and I can tell you my, your best interest was not in my mind when I was a technologist. What I was trained to do is produce food as cheaply as possible to make maximum profits for food companies. That is a fact as cheap as possible. And if you don't understand what is in that food product, E number, blah, 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 it should not be in that food product because it's destroying your body. We need to get back to eating food <coughs> naturally. 
like organic food, good products, you know, not processed food, plastics, pesticides. And the other one I put down here is auto intoxication because when you're heavily stressed, as Aussies, we work very hard. We, we try and build our careers, we're in the workplace, but stress disrupts your biome substantially. Substantially, it actually affects the biome. So stress management is another very important thing. But there is good news. <laughs> the good news is there is, there is a group of foods called fermented foods or, or probiotic foods. Does anybody want to guess what fermentation means? Yeah, that's the, the science of anaerobic fermentation, things like that. The word fermentation actually means boiling. <laughs> boiling. Boiling. Yeah, boiling. The reason being is because it's a very ancient part of our you know, many cultures across the world, whether it's the Chinese who invented sauerkraut or you know, fermented shark in, in Scandinavia. And it's a huge part, and what, or even chocolate. That's, blows my mind. Chocolate is a fermented food. And so it, it, yeah, it, it's amazing. Uh, I'll tell you why chocolate is so good in a sec. <laughs> You've got all the information you need. <laughs> but, but fermentation is a way, it, it was called boiling because they invented, like the ancient cultures invented fermentation for quite a silly reason actually. It was more so for alcohol production. And what happened is when we started to domesticate a lot of these wheat products and rye, it was more so because we wanted to get drunk <laughs> or grapes and things like that, so we started to harvest these things. But the fermentation is a way of unlocking nutrients in the food that we worked out. It's a way of bringing in all these beautiful, good bacteria into the food. And it's very, it's a, just an important cultural aspect for most, most cultures, even Australia. Like one of the reasons why Captain Cook was, he managed to come to Australia and sell it was because of sauerkraut. Because a lot of these sailors at the time were dying from scurvy. So we figured out with his team that having you know, pickled cabbage on board, and the Chinese did it for centuries before as well, is a way to address sailors dying from scurvy. So we wouldn't be here if it was for, wasn't for sauerkraut. <laughs> and the word pro means for and biotic life. Anti means against, biotic life, probiotic, antibiotic. Now what's the difference between, you know, there's a huge amount of buzz in the industry now about probiotics. Now what's the difference between the stuff you find in a pill and the stuff that you get in your food? Does anybody want to have a guess? The ones in pills, are, they're really, it's in, in the cowboy area at the moment with the number of claims that big pharmaceuticals can make. But what we know is that we've got thousands of years of tried and true testing that fermented foods actually do good. Whereas the isolated ones that you find in the pill or in those yogurts, which are usually full of sugar as well, they're not really tried and true. And they're only a few strains. So I'm gonna teach you about kefir in a minute and I'll tell you all about it. 